In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, I'm going to be talking about the Fighter Vocation, and this is arguably the most popular of the basic four vocations of the game. I'm going to be talking about how to use your shield, how to manage your stamina, what skills to select, what augments to go for, and a little bit on the equipment front, what equipment to use. So if you've been wanting to know how to play a fighter in Dragon's Dogma 2, watch on for some helpful information. So first of all, let's talk about the general role of the fighter in the group. The fighter is essentially the tank of the group. They are standing in front of the enemy, trying to keep the enemy's attention, keep them away from the archers and mages in the back, etc., so that they are not being attacked and interrupted by other enemies. That means that you're going to be in melee range most of the time, and that you're going to be playing somewhat defensively in order to stay alive and keep enemies' attention while your DPS characters, quote-unquote, range them down or other melee characters attack them. And that's not to say that you can't deal damage with a fighter, because you absolutely can, but your main focus is staying alive and keeping enemies away from your ranged units. And if you do decide to make a fighter during character creation, you're going to try and make a large character, and there are a couple reasons for that. First, the larger your character, the more equipment weight it can carry, and heavier armor weighs heavier weight. So being able to be able to stay mobile and use heavy equipment, very good for a fighter. Secondly, the larger your character and the taller your character, the less likely it is that they're going to be knocked down in the game. So both of those things benefit a tank. So try and make a large character if you're going for a fighter, if you're just talking about optimization. And when choosing a pawn for your fighter, ideally you would choose either like a mage or an archer. You can obviously go with whatever you want. You can fill that those roles out with other people's pawns. But you either want a mage that's going to be able to heal you and you know support you in combat or an archer that's going to hang back behind you and help pick off enemies and then maybe get a mage from you know someone else's pawn. But if you're talking about your main pawn, mage and archer are really good pairings with fighter in my opinion, at least early on in the game. So the next thing is that fighters use either a sword or mace and a shield. Swords deal slashing damage, maces do strike damage, and shields block and also deal strike damage. I like the combination of sword and shield so far the best because it gives me a slash option with the sword and then also when I use my shield bash, I can do strike damage with my shield. You don't have to do that, but I kind of recommend that in order to have both those damage types. So obviously a big part of playing a fighter is blocking, knowing how to block, when to block. One of the tricky things about Dragon's Dogma is it kind of has like a soft target lock system that kind of keeps the camera pointing towards the enemies that you're fighting most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes when you're first learning to play a fighter, your shield might be pointing the wrong direction. And even though you're blocking, if you get hit in the back, surprisingly, you do not block the damage. So one of the things you need to learn to do really quickly is in order to be able to point your shield in the right direction. And something that you can learn to do if you can train yourself to do it early on is when you're holding block, if you move the left stick while you press the B button, you can actually change the direction your shield is without changing, removing your character at all. So let's say you're accidentally pointed the wrong way from like a dragon or something like that and you hit B and forward, you now will switch your shield around and go forward the other way. That allows you to do this quickly without having to let go of block and repress block again. And now the next thing to understand in this game is that when you block attacks, it consumes stamina. You probably knew that already. But the amount of stamina that becomes blocked is determined by the attack that hits you. So if you block a little goblin swing, it probably doesn't take that much stamina. But if you block like a tail swipe from a dragon, it's going to consume a lot of your stamina while you're blocking. And if it consumes more stamina than you have, then you're going to become guard broken and you'll be vulnerable for several seconds where you can't really do anything and enemies can just keep attacking you unless a party member helps you. So you definitely don't want to become guard broken and you need to learn to manage your stamina effectively so that you don't or you're going to be in deep trouble. And there are a couple of things to keep in mind when you're talking about managing your stamina. First of all, when you sprint, they consume stamina. So be careful if you're sprinting out on the landscape and then you run directly into combat, you might be low on stamina when you begin combat, which might make you susceptible to being guard broken. So if you see a fight coming up ahead, let go of sprint or toggle off sprint, get your stamina back up before engaging. Secondly, you don't recover stamina while you're holding block, which means that you need to figure out when it's safe to let go of block to recover stamina. Otherwise, if you just sit there and hold block, eventually you will be guard broken, as I mentioned. Another thing to pay attention to when playing a fighter is don't overextend yourself by using your skills repeatedly. Playing a good fighter in this game means knowing when to use your skills and knowing when to just block or regular attack. Regularly attacking and heavy attacking in this game don't consume stamina. So you can sit there and swing away while your stamina recovers and then block when you need. So make sure that you know, you're dealing damage to enemies by attacking, but you don't always need to use your skills if you don't need. So make sure you don't go overboard with the use of them. 
And then the last thing I want to mention is equipment weight. Make sure you're managing your equipment weight on your fighter. If you have too much equip weight, if you're like in the average heavy, etc., you're going to not only move slower, which is you know bad for a fighter because you need to be positioned where you need to be positioned, but you also expend more stamina when you're moving. So because stamina management is such a huge part of playing fighter, managing your equip weight can really help improve your stamina management in combat as well. And just one other quick tip real quick before I forget. If you have toggle sprint on and off and you press sprint and you forget, sometimes you can be sprinting around in battle when you don't need to be consuming excess stamina. So make sure that, you know, you either turn that off or that you're aware that that's happening. Okay, so let's talk about the skills that I use for fighter. I'm going to mention five here. You can only have four equipped at once. One of them is more of an honorable mention. But first, let's start with blink strike and its upgrade burst strike. This is your gap closing skill. You will probably not use any skill more than this skill as a fighter in the game. It simply gets you into melee range quickly. It hits hard. It's really good for beginning combat to get you positioned. And you can also use it to dash out of like harmful AoEs that are you know going to land on you otherwise. You know, maybe a dragon's trying to breathe fire on you and you need to get the hell out of the way quickly. You can use this, point it in a different direction and dash out of the way. So you'll pretty much always use this skill. You want to upgrade it as soon as you can so it dashes longer. And it's just really, really good. You'll always, always have this one. And the next skill that I really like is Shield Bash and its upgrade Shield Pummel. And why this is good is for two reasons. First, it does strike damage. So enemies that kind of resist slash damage, it gives you a nice other damage option. Like sometimes when you're fighting skeletons, it can be really useful to just slaughter them really quickly. But also it helps knock backward or knock down enemies. And like, you know, if you're fighting enemies that can be difficult for you, if you just Shield Bash or Shield Pummel into them, sometimes you can knock them flat immediately. And then you can just press heavy attack on them and finish them off very, very quickly. And it, sometimes my combo ends up looking something like blink or burst strike into an enemy, shield bash or shield pummel, and then heavy attack and they're done. And then on to the next one. And you can just zip around doing that and it works really, really well. So highly recommend shield bash and shield pummel as soon as you can upgrade it. Another really good skill here and one that's not entirely mandatory depending on your party makeup is air word slash or cloud word slash. And it doesn't do a ton of damage but it does a couple things that are good for you. First, it's good against aerial enemies, like the harpies, etc., that you're going to be fighting in the game, and some other ones where you really don't have a way to hit them very easily unless you're like a really good player. And so this can give you a way to hit flying enemies and still contribute when that's happening. Otherwise, as a tank, you're kind of just like hanging around waiting for enemies to land from the air, and it can be kind of boring. So this gives you an option to play offensively when enemies are flying, and I find that's very helpful. But it also allows you to reach the head of enemies that are weaker in the head when you can't normally reach them from the ground without having to climb up on them. So sometimes you can hit like a Cyclops in the face or a Minotaur in the face by using this attack or and it can get some extra damage out of it by using it. So I just find it has good utility for those two things. You don't have to use this one depending on if you have a lot of ranged characters in your group that can do this for you. But I find it to be very useful so I'm not just standing around in those scenarios. And the other skill I'm using is called Flawless Guard. This is the upgraded version. I believe the previous version is called Perfect Guard. I can't completely remember. But what this skill does is it kind of spins you around while you're blocking stuff with your shield and it deals a tiny bit of damage in an AoE to enemies. And what's really good about this skill is it gets you out of the stagger of enemies like hitting you. Like maybe sometimes you're getting gang banged by enemies and you get staggered and then another one hits you and you get staggered and another one gets you and you get in the stagger chain. That can be really, really frustrating. Maybe you you messed up or something, your positioning was bad. What this does is it allows you to break out of the stagger and spin around. So you can kind of cancel out your stagger with this, allowing you to not just stand there and get gangbanged to death or hit over and over, and it's really, really nice. Keep in mind that this isn't going to work for you if you're guard broken, but if you are staggered, it'll allow you to get out of stagger, and I cannot stress how valuable that is as a tank. I also want to mention that shield summons is almost a must on a fighter pawn, like if you're not playing a fighter but you do have a fighter pawn, because that will help them keep aggro on bigger enemies, and they tend to lose aggro if you're a DPS character and you're very good at your role. That tank won't be able to hold aggro unless they can use that ability, so make sure that they have that if you hire a fighter pawn, that that's one of the abilities they have, or you have it on your fighter pawn if it's your main pawn. And then the last skill that I'll mention that is very situational but can be used a number of ways is Springboard, which allows you to launch one of your allies onto an enemy or maybe high up into the air. For instance, if you're like need to get up onto a cliff or something, you could spring one of your allies up there. Maybe if there's like a ladder, they could knock it down to you. But predominantly, you're using it in combat to launch allies that would normally climb up on enemies onto them 
so that they can, you know, get in position to attack them while climbing onto them. And it's very situational. You won't need it all the time, but it's definitely one you can swap in and out as you need. And obviously, when it comes to core skills, you're going to get all of them for a fighter anyway, because it just kind of upgrades your passive abilities as a fighter. And when it comes to augments, you want to get all the ones you can for fighter early on. But also, there's some other ones from other vocations that you might want to spend some time farming in order to have, like Mage's Exaltation, which improves stamina recovery, because that's really good. Stamina management is a huge part of playing a tank. Archer's Endurance gives you um, more stamina, so that's also good. These are things that you can add to this build that will make you an even better tank. And then equipment-wise, obviously, you're going to want to be on the lookout for just better gear. This is not Dark Souls, like each piece of equipment is not equal to each piece of equipment. There's obviously better weapons, better armor, better shields, and you're going to want to upgrade as you go. Something to consider, though, is if you're really good at blocking, you might not need the heaviest armor in the world in order to keep your equip load down. So, you know, if you're going to invest money somewhere, invest in your shield and your weapon, maybe do your armor last and just learn to block. That can be a better strategy than relying on reducing the damage of messing up and getting hit. Additionally, when you're talking about rings, again, you want to have rings that either boost your stamina, stamina recovery, give you health, improve your equip weight, because improving your equip weight will also help with your stamina management. All of those things are good to look out for, so pay attention for those things on rings and don't be afraid to equip those. And then the last tip, uh, something I should have mentioned in the how to use a shield section, but I'll just mention it here, is that you can actually parry in this game um, after you get the core skills for the fighter if you time your block right when you get an attack. So that's something that you should practice doing on like low B goblins when, you know, it's not going to kill you if you miss. But... You know, when it comes to like larger like dragon attacks and stuff like that, you're not going to be trying to parry those really. You're going to be blocking. But you can parry some attacks, particularly from humanish oid enemies, I find to be the best to do that with. You know, something that like has an obvious attack with a weapon that you can just parry that weapon attack it tends to be the best time to parry. So you might want to practice parrying, but get blocking down before you start on parrying. So that wraps up our fighter guide. I hope you guys got some useful information out of it. It's just kind of a general way that I've been playing my fighter that's been successful for me, and hopefully it is for you as well. If there are other tips that I forgot to mention, leave them in the comments, and if you have questions, leave them there as well, and I will answer them as soon as I can.